Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me here today. My talk is called Fishing for Whales in the Gulf. As you see, I made the title of this lecture sound quite impressive, and now I have to deliver. Uh, I'll talk about our expertise, the experience with dealing with the customers from different cultures, uh, using as an example customers from the Gulf states. Fair warning for those of you that expect a lot of, you know, you, a lot of uh, uh, data and uh, economics. I will, I will concentrate on more qualitative approach and some opinions, some stories and practical examples from uh, our company. Using the, the title metaphor, uh, first I will talk a little bit about the fisher. So, um, I am uh, working for Gain Desire for the last six years on different positions and as vice president for the uh, last, uh, last uh, few years. Before that, I was a uh, head of entertainment channels in biggest internet portal in Poland. And what's also important for this, for this talk is that my educational back background is quite different than most people from gaming that, that come from IT. I am a sociologist. I graduated from Jagiellonian University. And I like to see things from more social perspective, so in social and in social context. Uh, a little bit about our company. Uh, we're on the market for 12 years. You may not uh, know our name, Game Desire, because we just changed it from Ganymede or Ganymede. It was hard to pronounce, so now we're, we're Game Desire, but we're on the market since 2004. We're leading social casino and casual games developer in, in Poland. Our main social casino products are um, uh, poker, also bingo slots. From the casual games, we have just launched the, on the mobile the Pool Life Pro product and snooker. Basically, we're targeting the male audience 20, 20 plus. Uh, what might be interest, interesting for somebody is we, 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 we have introduced the free-to-play model with virtual currency in 2007, so way before it became popular worldwide. As a company, we, we specialize with multiplayer games available of, on different, different platforms. Right now, of course, we concentrate on mobile, but, we are bar but our games are also on different social networks and uh, traditionally in as, a, as a web services. Uh, for this talk, I will, I will talk mostly about the GameDesire.com website. Uh, why is so? Because we have a lot of data gathered in the 12 years on, uh, we, we are on the market. The traffic on this website is mostly organic and from search engine. And we have a global reach and customers from different countries and different cultures. Just to see how diverse our audience is, you can see that, of course, 30% from Poland, but the rest all over the world. Uh, it's important because it gives us uh, uh, possibility to to make some comparisons and and draw some conclusions. Now let's talk about the fish. As it's well known that 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 oil wealth has created in some countries uh, well educated middle class with uh, high demand for Western products and services with a population that's projected to be around 60 million in 2020. So this market 
is the key to any company looking for uh, success, any success in the Middle East. For, for the sake of this, this presentation, I will use the term Gulf or Arab users having, having in mind those four uh, national markets. So Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Un uh, Arab Emirates, and uh, uh, Qatar. How do we how do we get how do we acquire users from from those countries? We're fortunate that we our we have Arabic version of our website for ten years, so vast majority of our traffic comes from uh, it's it's a, it's a organic traffic. But another source of traffic comes from the search engines. We found out that. Most of Arabic search space is still uh, relatively uh, unclaimed. And SEO in Arabic can be one of the most cost-effective ways to bring new players to our service. But uh, we have to understand that search behavior in the Middle East is a little bit different than in other regions of the world. For example, many Arabs use Google regularly, and, uh, but in a very special way. Very often, the searchers type a search query in Arabic, then translate it in the online translator tool, then paste the English version, and when they get the results, they translate it back to Arabic. So that's, that's one example how uh, SEO can be really different in such market than what we do in, in Europe on, or, or in, in states. Additionally, it's worth mentioning that pay-per-click advertising is still one, one of the most untapped marketing channels in the, in the whole Middle East. Uh, as we see from the, from, the, from the graphic, the average cost per click in countries like Saudi Arabia uh, or, or, or Kuwait is uh, 60 or 80 percent less than average U.S. CPC, and but of course the 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 the, the PPC optim optimization requires trustful local partners that knows how to do it and how to uh, acquire users. So we have some users from Gulf states, and now how we treat them. how to build a net to, to, to catch the, the whales. People from around the world vary in many different ways, in, in, in terms of their looks, their interests, their behaviors, and also in the gaming patterns and, and buying patterns. And I believe that the most important factor influencing this is the culture. There is this natural common mistakes, mistake that others think like us, that our customers think like, like we do, and what is obvious for us, it's obvious uh, for them. We are in the Netherlands, so I'd like to invoke the words of famous Dutch social psychologist and researcher Gerd Hofstede, that culture is more often a source of conflict than of synergy, and cultural differences are a nuisance at best and often a, a disaster. And di a disaster. What it means is that ignoring the cultural differences, it's not a matter of slightly lower or higher income. Uh, mostly it's the case of to be or not to be in particular market. So we believe and we have learned from years of experience that in order to be successful in uh, in a local market, one has to understand these cultural differences and develop what is called the, the cultural or, or intercultural intelligence. What is this cultural intelligence and how to get it? Basically speaking, cultural intelligence is the ability to function effectively in different cultural contexts. And to develop this cultural intelligence, we have to understand our own culture, understand the culture of our customers or, or partners, acknowledge the differences, 
draw the practical conclusions, and act accordingly to mitigate, overcome, or use these differences in our benefit. And there are different frameworks, theoretical frameworks for analyze, analyzing cultural differences, and I will shortly, shortly review a, a few of them. They stress different aspects of, of those differences. I will concentrate on those aspects that could be important for the, for the gaming mic, m market. First, it's the Richard D. Lewis, that the author of the When Cultures Collide, where in his book he classifies the world cu cultures in three rough categories. The, the linear active culture, where those who plan, schedule, organize, follow action chain, do one thing at a time. When we think about this kind of culture, we have in mind Germans, Swiss, and this kind of uh, people. We have the reactive culture, the culture that, that, that prioritizes courtesy and respect, listening quietly and calmly to, to interlocutors and reacting carefully. This kind of culture will be like China and Japan. And uh, Arab culture, and also in some, some uh, uh, Latin American culture, is definitely multi-active culture with lively, talkative people doing many things at a time, planning their, their, their uh, priorities, not according to time schedule, but their relate, re relative importance and uh, that each appointment brings with. When we, when we look at this multi-active culture, we see that Saudi Arabia is on this continuum between reactive and multi-active, but very close to, to, the, to the top of this, of this triangle. And there are some uh, things that multi-active multi culture, multi culture uh, 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 brings with it. So for Arabs, the personal relationship paves, paves the way for the product or, or not, not buying the product. Arabs buy from people they like, not necessarily from those who offer the best product or, or the best price. Another researcher, Edward Hall, that studied intercultural communication in three dimensions, space, time, and context. I will just review the, 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 the context aspect because uh, Arabs are one of the most high-context people, which means that uh, high-context people, high-context culture, where essentially the communication is the situation, the relationships between interlocutors, and some things that are, there are, there, that are not verbal. What they say is only part of the message. They refer to wider, co wider context and nothing could be taken for granted, you have to be on your guard and always checking. Uh, one of the pioneers of, of, of cultural studies was this Gerd Hofstede, who conducted a survey among, among people in 74 countries and compared cultures along different variables. So Gulf countries in this respect can be classified with the highest power distance, collectivism understood as interdependence of, of social actors and very uh, masculine. Finally, in the, in the von Strompenhaus, another, another Dutch research uh, framework, Arabs are particular, affective, and diffuse, which means that context and relations are important. There are no absolute rules. Emotions are part of the relations and, and they are not controlled. And the relations work in continuum. There could be many types of relation at the time. Uh, that might be a, a bit boring, but how the framework could transfer to real business situations. They seem distance, distant from reality, but they, they let us ex explain some behavior and, and some situations that we encounter in the, in the business uh, practice, especially dealing with the 
customers from this, from this region. So buying is social. What it means that personal recommendations, word of mouth, example of others is the most important in this buying decision. Bargaining is a part of the culture, which means that the process of negotiation, negotiations is as important as the result and sometimes more important. Status symbols are important. Personal status symbol in the, in the, in the gaming service measuring VIP account or amount of gain chips gathered by some users is, uh, is, is very important. Logic that we understand does not always apply to those people. What is rational for us doesn't have to be rational uh, for them. It's important to make relations personal. So uh, easy access to personally known representatives of customer support. Male audience is most, most important, which means that the game should be appealing to, to, to male audience more than to, to women. And last but not least, always, we should always take into account the, some religious implication, especially in social casino, which is a bit tricky. So we have to put emphasis on, on social and not on casino. And there are some practical examples from our, from our, from our, uh, from our company. Uh, Bargaining is a part of the country. Giving, giving the players the bonus or some extra offer, which works in most markets, is not enough for people for whom the, the bargaining is the part of the culture. So we have found out that, that, that the players should have an opportunity to negotiate the price and the number of game chips that, that they buy, which let us create a special relation with, with this client and, and come back more often. And this bargaining doesn't mean like, you know, one just giving them one offer. It's a, a few rounds of offers and counter offers and finally uh, agreeing or, or making a, a deal for the, for the purchase. Another example is uh, multiple accounts. As most gaming services, we have policy of banning multiple accounts. But we have observed that some our players suddenly stop playing and paying after long activity. So after some research, we found out they, they just thought that their account became unlucky or cursed for some reason. And if, if, if they had the opportunity to like, get a new account with the uh, same credentials, they would play more than the comeback, and after some times they, they would like to have just another, another and another and another account just, just to have lucky accounts and not those that are cursed or something. Another thing is that in, in the customer relations with, with Wales from the Gulf states, uh, we have much better results in the communication process when the representatives they will deal with have a proper title like the head of customer relations and things like that, not just a regular representative. It's, it gives the feeling of this of important and high state, state status of the, uh, of, the, of the player. And now about the fishing. Was it, was it worth the, the hustle, what we were doing? These are some actual results that we get on gamedesire.com. So, as you see, the traffic from Arab countries is very similar to the regular one in terms of new registrations, D1, D7, 28, retention. There are slightly less reactivations among Arab players. And the conversion rate is similar. There are as likely to convert to paying users as any other players. However, when they convert, they are much more likely to become high-paying users. It's the only market when we have the opposite paying user structure. Most of paying users are whales, there are some dolphins, and few minnows. So if we get new paying users from uh, from, from, from those countries, there's a great chance that he will become a whale. 
RPU and RPPU. The result of such paying, paying player structure is that average revenue per user is 6.5 times higher than from other markets, and the RPPU is 4.5 times higher. Arab players make transactions twice as often, uh, twice often as than, than others, and the value of single transaction is 3.5 time, times higher. What's also interesting is this, it's this um, Arab players tend to, tend to pay more quickly and are typically more Im impulsive payers than the average user. And unlike other players, the LTV realization curve goes up for players who play for a long time. So it's like the longer, the, 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 the longer they play, the more they pay. Uh, and now conclusions. So in order to be successful in different culture market, you need to develop this intercultural intelligence and use, use it practically. The bigger the difference between your culture and the culture of your client, the more important this cultural in intelligence is. Gulf countries should be treated as separate, important income source for web game portal. At least web game, probably other also. There is an extraordinary, extraordinary well occurrence rate there, and investing and uh, in acquiring users from Gulf countries and proper cultural treatment really pays off. Thank you very much. Any questions? <clears throat> Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Arabic is a is a visually a different language. Do you have to put a lot of Ar Arabic characters in your game to market to the region, or is it all English? Actually, no. We don't have. Uh, well, our games are really simple. It's there are you know there are, uh, most of players uh, from Arabic countries play in poker and in pool, like ninety percent in poker and ten percent in pool. So this is, a, this is a simple, simple, simple game, and there are no special Arabic characters or, or, or things like that. Just a, just a, just a, just a good game. A question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, the results are impressive in terms of comparative to mm -hmm. the rest of the world. How much do you attribute that localization, the fact that you've made that effort to localize? I mean, even just the bargaining of chips. I mean, that's. Well, some of those things that we do, we just you know learn practically because we we, we have we, we we do it for for ten years. So during the the course, we find out that you know that some players were calling us and and we just we just find out that that introducing this possibility to to negotiate the price and in such a different way than with others pays off. So it's not like we were you know visionary ten years ago and knew everything. So we've learned along the way. Uh, yeah, and, and also the fact that we're doing for such a long time, it's, it's, it's really important because, we, the, as I said, the amount of organic traffic we, we get from those countries is, is, is significant. And yeah. I mean, one uh -huh. of the things that I thought separated you from a lot of other apps is that it really truly is dispersed across a number of countries. Mm -hmm. And um, when you start localizing for all of those different areas, how do you a Actually, uh, you know, the, it, it was the, like the idea of the founders that to have it in many, actually we, we just, there was a time when, when we had like 37 uh, language versions on our website. So we downgraded it to 16 just to keep them in the, you know, good quality. So, uh, but in terms of SEO, it was always always important because you know, for ten years having those those games and the, the descriptions of the games in different languages build the, the, the good SEO for the for this website. And yeah. then, but so like what? So the bargaining of chips, like in, mm -hmm. in in the Gulf areas, as an American, I probably wouldn't see that, right? Mm -hmm. So are you 
tailoring the experience for each di different oh yeah sure yeah region yeah, and then yeah, yeah. how do you actually with, not like every country but there are right. these bigger regions like uh, Arab countries uh, Latin America especially Brazil because we are we are big in Brazil so so we have like uh, two Brazilian guys in our company that that you know to, to, to take care of it so. So it's it's important. We see the value in this. Just in this, not just the main like tier one markets, U.S., Western Europe, but also in those those countries. And we did it for like we started it like you know ten years ten years ago. So it pays off now. And then what about the app stores? I mean, are you doing different versions of the apps? As I apps said, stores? I concentrated on the on the games I come as a as a website. Or of course, that right now our our strategy is uh, in mobile. So. As I said, we're, we, we have uh, poker, uh, uh, bingo, and slots on, on the iOS and on the Google Play. We just launched the pool on, the, uh, on both, both platforms. Uh, the snooker will be the next because also we also see the, that you know, uh, uh, pool is, is popular in some countries, and in some countries there is a snooker. So uh, we try to map the the, 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 the demand of the users and, and create products that could be good for those, those, those regions. Right. Yep. That's interesting. Thanks. Any other questions? Oh, one more. Hold on. Hi. Uh, when you were talking about uh, um, the whales and that there are actually not many dolphins, like it's mainly a country of whales, um, have you faced or how much market saturation have you faced there? I mean, uh, to your experience? Uh, that's a good question, but I, I cannot answer it right now. Okay. You know, yeah, it's, it's, I don't have this data. Okay. It, but would you say that um, it, at some point is very hard to escalate uh, traffic in general? Maybe, but you know, it's, uh, uh, the, 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 the traffic that we, we get from those, those markets, it's relatively low. And when you think about 60 million people leaving there, so I think there is a still, you know, huge potential to, to, to get more. Okay, thank you. Yeah.